All right, so today I'm gonna to talk about a little funky concept that I call a bolus. It doesn't really need a name because it's pretty simple, but um, I don't know, I think the name's kind of funny. Anyway, uh, it deals with a certain common JavaScript problem, at least it's common for me, which is that you'll have a very long function that's usually computational in nature um, that is, is blocking. So it's, it's gonna do a long computation and maybe it takes 30 seconds, takes 10 seconds, whatever, long enough so that the user experience is totally destroyed because your, your website um, stops, stops responding. So it's a very simple example of such a function. I have a pretty horrible primality check, but it just takes a number, goes through its divisors, um, and uh, checks whether it's prime, right? Specifics don't really matter here. This is just an example of a long running function. So we can reasonably give it small prime numbers and it will terminate quickly. So there you go, it, it, it does it pretty much instantly. But if we give it a large prime number, like um, two to the 31 minus one, which turns out to be prime, you can see here that the web page is totally frozen. So this timer, which used to be counting uh, up and down, or sorry, just up, <laughs> but it, this timer used to be counting uh, has stopped uh, functioning. And if there's anything else on this web page, that would also stop functioning. So you know, your buttons, your, your your whole web app just stops working. So the usual way to deal with this is to use a worker, which is JavaScript's uh, way of doing multi-threading effectively. So um, this worker is quite simple. It has this is prime function as well, and it accepts a message, which is basically just uh, that uh, is just the the number we're trying to test for primality. So it, uh, it 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 takes it in, checks whether it's prime, and then sends a message back with the result. So um, and then here uh, we when we receive the message, we just log it. So turns out it's so large that my computer is refusing to do it, probably because I'm running OBS at the same time. Um, if we pass this into the workers, the worker dot post message, and we give this number, um, as you can see here, the timer it doesn't pause at all. And in fact, if we pass it that large number from before, the timer will just keep on ticking like nothing, nothing is wrong. Um, the worker is churning away and eventually, uh, you know, the worker should return the result of that, that this number is indeed prime. So that's great, except there's a few problems. One of which is that it forces something asynchronous, which sometimes isn't, isn't what you want. But sort of the more uh, fundamental problem is that, oh, you can see here it actually returned true. Great. Um, but the more fundamental problem is that if you give it a number, that's just going to take absolutely forever to finish. So as an example here, right, this number is prime, um, but the worker is going to spend literally days trying to figure out that it's prime because it's, it's going to try every divisor. And that is just not great because even if your web page itself is, isn't broken, your worker is broken. And so, you know, now if we ask the worker, hey, uh, is three prime, it's not going to respond because it can't. It's, it's too busy figuring out whether this, whatever, nine quintillion is prime, right? So um, th th this is sort of a, a, what you have to do in this case is, is kill the worker and create a new one, which you know, is, 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 is pretty bad. So how do we deal with this? Um, the way that I like to deal with it, or that I came up with some years ago, uh, is to use the generators. So a generator is often used as a way to um, sort of elegantly uh, make a stream of data uh, data points from a function. But it can also be used um, to pause execution of the function. So in this case, what we'll do is we'll make is prime a generator, and then uh, every time we check a divisor, we'll yield uh, yield something. Well, what it yields right now doesn't particularly matter, but now what you'll see, right, is if we um, call is prime on a number like whatever, so you see that was bad, seven, then it's a generator and we, we call next repeatedly. And eventually when we're done, the, the value of next um, will be uh, um, the value that we desire, so either true or false. So I think we can do that here if we just do, um, let me do this here. That. There we go. So you can see here, we iterated through the generator, waited till it's done, and when it's done, um, the value is indeed true. So this is prime. So this is okay. Uh, I call this type of process a bolus. Um, it's just a generator, but I don't know. It's, it, it, I, I call it that because I like to call the process of evaluating it digestion. Because um, I don't know, that just seems right to me. Uh, people can disagree. Um, but anyway, so, so one thing we can do with this, right, is, is we can have a, a bolus timeout. So if we ask it to process this giant prime here, and we say, 
a timeout in 10 milliseconds, you can see here it, it, it timed out. So the way that this works is quite simple. We accept our bolus here. We repeatedly call next in this loop. Um, and then if it's done, we, we break. So that, that's straightforward. But if it's been too long since it started, as measured by performance.now, we throw an error. So we, we kind of bail out. So this is nice because now we can we can um, check if something is prime. This will probably time out actually, yeah. But if we want to give it some more time, there we go. And uh, you can see uh, you know, we choose a value such that it doesn't hamper the user experience. This is fine. First of all, it's a little bit concerning that 65,000 already, I mean, it's small in, in modern computer terms, and yet it's taking more than 10 milliseconds to run. The reason why is because we're yielding so often, right? So because we're yielding so often, um, yielding is highly non-local. There's a lot of overhead with creating the generator objects and all that. Um, so it probably just, it, it makes things difficult to optimize, right? So, so one, one way to deal with that is to yield less frequently. So as an example, maybe we yield only every uh, 50,000 steps or something. Um, like that. So now it's going to yield more infrequently. Um, and now, as you can see, it didn't time out in 10 milliseconds. But um, so this is nice. So now, now we, this is still synchronous, but we can do it in a way such that like if this bolus is well written, which isn't too hard to do, um, if it pauses frequently enough, then um, uh, the, the user uh, experience won't be won't be hampered. And so when you're designing a bolus, you, you want to uh, find the sweet spot between pausing uh, too little, which will mean that you'll get periods that are blocking too long, and uh, pauses that are too frequent. Uh, which will make things more inefficient. So in this case, 50,000 seems pretty reasonable because it's it's it's, you know, it's it's a very tight loop. It's going to do uh, complete pretty quickly. Anyway, so that's 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 the sort of the fundamental idea of these these boluses. W what else can we do with these? Well, one thing that's quite nice is that we can do this asynchronously because if we have our bolus here, b equals is prime, this is sort of asynchronous because we we can do whatever we want, right? And then do what other processing here, right? And then we can continue the bolus. So the, the, the bolus is, it can be evoked, uh, sorry, invoked whenever you want. And you can wrap that into a relatively uh, simple simple method. So here we have run, run process asynchronous that we pass in a process and a certain step size in milliseconds. And the, the idea here is if we take run process async and we are curious about say 2 to 31 again, right? Uh, and then we can say uh, this thing returns a promise. And then we can say uh, uh, with 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 that result, uh, let's log it. So you can see the timer is fine. We can in fact do whatever other code we want, right? Um, and when this finishes, uh, it will call this this thing. So this is just standard promises. Of course, you could use async await and and, and all that kind of uh, that good stuff. So so we we we've, we've turned this this bolus into something asynchronous. Um, which, which is kind of cute because now we can have a single function, a single implementation that can be invoked in both um, synchronous and asynchronous way. Yeah, we'll, wait, we'll wait for that to finish, but let's look at the implementation here. So um, it's quite straightforward, actually. We, we just we have this step function that repeatedly goes through. Um, it iterates through next, and of course, if next is finished, we, we, we resolve the promise. And if next is not finished, um, we we break uh, we, we break out and set a new timeout. So this 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 timeout schedules the, the remaining step to occur. Um, it is, it's scheduled uh, in a non-blocking way. So all the whatever JS finishes before um, it it tries to evaluate again. So here you can see after a while it actually returned true. So that's that's nice. Even cooler is that we can actually. Um, make, we can cancel this process. Um, so suppose we have this long process again, and we'll have the process called B. So so B is, we, we can, uh, uh, you know, use the B promise as, 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 uh, as, as we desire, but we can also cancel it. So if we cancel B, you can see it just threw an error, which is one way of dealing with it. But in any case, we've canceled it, um, and B no longer works. So so we, we stopped the is prime calculation. Like if this were in a worker, we wouldn't have to kill the worker, right? If we a process is taking a long time, we want to stop it, or the user canceled the, the computation, we just call the cancel function on the bolus and, and things are great. So this is quite nice. Now, even better is if in this bolus, we, we, can, we can yield perhaps a, a progress report. So as an example here, we have D divided by P, 
uh, that estimates how long or what percentage is done. Um, then what we can do is when we create this uh, bolus, uh, step size of 10, we can give it a function that takes in p being the progress and then log something like um, progress, uh, I don't know, p times 100 to three decimal places. And just in the parentheses, there we go. So you can see here's actually progress. So and actually here we should be able to see once we cancel the bolus, it stops, it stops processing. So this is this is quite nice. Um, we have the ability to cancel, and we have the ability to um, see progress to 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 uh, show the user how much of a bolus is finished completing. All right. So here's here's a more sort of a fleshed out example of how a bolus might work. So. Um, in this case, uh, this is this is for graphene, which is the original reason why I wanted bolus. Um, here uh, we have this function async digest, which is uh, basically just the implementation that I, I just showed. So where is it here? Yeah. So he takes in a bolus and uh, with some options, and then um, uh, returns a, an object which we can use uh, relatively ergonomically. So you can see here, we, we call this draw bolus uh, generator thing, so this, this creative generator, um, which iterates over the pixels of this image here and computes uh, each pixel. And uh, you can see here, every five, five rows, um, it's yielding. So then what we can do here is on progress, we can actually um, set this, this progress thing here. Um, uh, and then if we render this, you can see progress occurs. So we can choose whatever function. Um, and probably, let's choose something a little bit more expensive. So maybe something like, uh, I don't know. That's more expensive. All right. So as you can see here, um, things are responsive. The, the web page works as you as you please, or as, as you'd expect. Um, but it's, um, it's being able to compute this very intensive function uh, pretty efficiently. So we have bolus, digest this bolus. And then after it's finished, we um, copy it over and say, okay, it took however many milliseconds. So yeah, that's the, the bolus concept. Um, I'm still kind of fleshing out the details. One funny little thing is that um, with this set timeout um, thing here, uh, it kind of, s set timeout stops working when you fo uh, take your focus off the page. So um, I might actually be able to demonstrate that. So if we go back, this is our, our old example here. Um, if we do something like, okay, here's our here's our progress thing, right? And then if we navigate to a new page, you can see it's slowed to a crawl. And this is, oh, it's, it's, there's a few problems with this. One, one problem is that um, it's not computing very much in each step because the timeout length is still the same. But also when you return to the page, sometimes it's possible if the timeout's long enough that it, um, it, it won't immediately start um, start uh, being responsive again. In any case, it, it's not as, it's not as uh, efficient as, as before. So the way that Graphene de deals with that right now um, is actually to use window post message. So um, here in Bolus here, if you pass the used post message uh, option, then instead of uh, using set timeout to schedule the next um, next step, it uses post message. Um, it, it, it messages itself, and it turns out that's an asynchronous timeout that isn't uh, isn't throttled by navigating off the page. So set timeout, request animation frame, set interval, um, those are all um, throttled, but uh, post message is not. So this is sort of a nice thing, uh, a nice way to do that, uh, so that it, it works just as well when you're not focused on the page. So yeah, there's the bolus concept. That's how it's being applied uh, to Grapheme. Obviously, the, this this code is pretty. It's just a minimal example. It's not fully flushed out. Um, this, for example, is a little bit inelegant in my view. Uh, so so hopefully uh, there will be more methods and an even more ergonomic way of dealing with these functions. Um, but yeah, there's my uh, little rant.